and welcome to the Stratford Shakespeare Festival's webcast. We have two wonderful actresses with us today. Nikki James, who you've met before, who was uh, when she was playing, or she still is, <laughs> Juliet. And we have Diane D'Aquila. The two ladies are appearing in Caesar and Cleopatra. Nikki plays Cleopatra, and Diane D'Aquila plays Tata Tita, here, from here on in, she will be called your character. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice that you're with us today. And uh, Nikki, you have yet another nurse uh, in one of your, in, in your I plays. Do. I do. But it's nurse from hell. Yes, it's a very different relationship. <laughs> well, we are going, today, a couple of days ago, I took a tour backstage, saw some of the costumes and saw some of the, uh, the sets. And so I think we'll take a look at that first and then we'll get back uh, to a little Q&A. So if you have some questions, please uh, do send them in. I know lots of people have sent in questions ahead of time for this, so we've got lots of things to talk about. And Diane and Nikki were already chattering about the, uh, the production. It's a, it's a very fascinating show, Caesar Cleopatra. So um, we will go now to have a look backstage. I have Ryan Flanagan here, and he has built uh, a magnificent prop, a piece of uh, a ship that's going to uh, be used in Caesar and Cleopatra. And you've uh, really worked some wonders uh, transforming it from a mobility scooter into this amazing prop. I wondered if you could tell us about how you uh, went about that. Um, well, we took apart a mobility scooter. Um, Chris Wheeler, he's an electronics man. And we just took the back wheels off it and reworked the wire to make it wireless so someone can control it backstage just with the remote control. It's built in two pieces on a hinge because our hallway is a lot lower than our stage and the ship is over 16 feet tall. So it needs so to be stored when, it's, yeah. when the show's not so on? So it hinges down and folds in half and rolls down the hallway to get stored for, for other shows. Well, it's a magnificent looking piece, I must say. How, much, uh, how many hours or, or days went into building this? Oh. Five weeks. Five weeks? Yeah. It's spectacular. And we just saw it go in uh, on and off stage and it uh, ran very smoothly. So yeah. you're happy you're going you're gonna to test it Yeah, we're going to tweak it a bit more and then it should be good. Excellent. Thanks yeah. very much, Ryan. Okay. We're here with Joanna Billings, who is a cutter in our wardrobe department. And she's working on a number of costumes for Caesar and Cleopatra. Can you tell us about the ones that you've got here on display? Yeah, certainly. We're actually doing um, all of Cleopatra's costumes, uh, as well as three of the slaves. The designs are based on uh, Egyptian hieroglyphics, which all look like pleading. But um, the challenge for him was to make those images into a three-dimensional form that we recognize um, as clothing. So what he ended up really with was um, haute couture meets Egyptian hieroglyphics. This was the overall look, so it's just all pleating. And so what we've done is sent a lot of the fabrics away to be professionally pleated. So we're getting a modern type of pleating. When you have pleating um, done professionally, you kind of have to let the pleat, let the fabric do what it wants to. Um, so this is a really dead simple, st almost straight dress just taken in at the waist and the, and the collar falls over all by itself. Um, he sometimes has to stretch the edge a bit, but uh, but this one actually worked beautifully. It's, it's, it's absolutely yeah. gorgeous. The rest of the costumes we have um, on our team are Cleopatra's costumes. And this, um, uh, this one will eventually be gold wings. Is that attached sides. as a belt or it's actually part of the costume? That'll be part of the costume. Yeah, we'll just attach it right onto this base. Can you tell me what kinds of fabrics they are? Are they um, historically accurate in, in any way? I, no. <laughs> They're not accurate at all. The, um, the pleating effect works much better in synthetic fabrics. It works best of all in metallic fabrics. Um, the Egyptians probably used nothing but cotton. Kim okay. Crosley is uh, one of our cutters here in wardrobe, and she's going to tell us about a couple of the other costumes here uh, that show uh, a real uh, likeness to the haute couture pictures that we were just looking at. Mm -hmm. Kim, can you tell us about these two? Um, this one is a character called the, uh, the Eunuch. There's two of them um, that hang around uh, Cleopatra's court. And it's really an arrangement, very much like a sari, but because the fabric has been pre-pleated and we've um, 
reinforce the pleating by stitching in each of the edges so over the course of time as they wear it it's not going to flatten out as much. That's a big job to do all That's of that right. uh, stitching, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, but it helps to have the pleating done mechanically outside as well. Uh, this one actually we pleated in-house because the style of the pleating and the depth of the pleating that we needed, uh, they were unable to handle it at the pleaters. So we actually pleated that one here. And who are you working on this for? This is, uh, the character's name is Achilles, and he's a member, again, of uh, Cleopatra's army. So this is the Egyptian army. It, it, this is a, a leather that comes with a print on it, and he decided that he wanted a texture in it that was like a pin tuck. So we actually did that here as well. And these are strips of an overskirt that will go with it, that will sit over the silk skirt. So you get the layers of the dark and the light and the different textures. Now for armor, this is quite flexible. Yes, because it's it's because it's leather, and because it's built on a soft cloth um, backing with a a felt liner, and the felt helps take the body shape and fill it out without being terribly heavy and without being terribly stiff. Our cutter Terry Dance is working on the costumes for Caesar, played by Christopher Plummer. I've got a number of sketches for Caesar, um, starting with with this look, which is what he starts the show wearing. He has a, um, a red tunic that's similar but different to the other red tunics in the show. In the second act, he starts out wearing this in the banquet scene. And then at the very end, he will change into a version of the armor again, the golden armor look. We started with our first fitting with, with this, which is, this has sort of come a part of it, but um, a base that we could build a shape on because the uh, Roman army they were sort of stylized armor, so we want we wanted to have sort of pectorals built in, abdominals sort of built in, and this is this is sort of the next stage and a lattice work of of leather with rivets. This is the banquet scene. So this is the velvet tunic. Um, what we're using is heat set Swarovski um, decorations to go around here and all down the arms, and then these. Um, There'll be these findings from the Bijou department at these intersecting points. This one is actually um, a microfiber fabric. It, um, it just seemed to work the best for Christopher at this, in this stage. The other people um, on stage have a bit more of a rough, um, a rough silk fabric, but this has got a bit, it looks it's more, very rich yes. and it's, yeah, it just seems to work for him. It fits a leader much better, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. 